Welcome back to the Web TV of OWF 13. We're here with Ted Dunning, Chief Application Architect at MapR Technologies. Welcome, Ted, and we're very honored to have you here with us today. Uh, you're too kind, too kind. Thanks for being here. So uh, MapR Technologies, could you tell us a bit more about, I mean, I think most of the people will know what MapR is, but just for the for those, for the few that don't. Uh, who knows, who knows what. But uh, MapR builds and sells a version of Hadoop. Starts with Apache Hadoop, and then we add technology to make it more suitable for business applications. These technologies improve speed and improve security in terms of data loss and disasters. All right, and I think, uh, I mean, aside from, from, uh, from MapR, uh, you, you, uh, you had some talks yesterday or today, especially related to differences, and you, you really wanted to touch on differences between the, the EU and the US open source. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I did speak yesterday, but that was in San Francisco. Uh, today is here in Paris. And th I think this highlights a lot of the difference. Uh, and I've been seeing this for the last few years, that the, the movements in the US and in Europe have very different flavors, which I think is really exciting. Uh, it's not something you see from one side or the other. You have to go there and, and look. So in the U.S., it's, it's a crazy atmosphere. It's so exciting. Thousands and thousands of new companies. Uh, but then you come to Europe and, and you have a very different tenor. And each location in Europe seems to have a different style. So in London, there's lots of work with finance and things like that. The startups are, are a very different flavor. In Berlin, they're, they're edgy. They're, they're pop sort of things. They're, they're very young and grungy. In Paris, uh, it, it's taken a little bit longer to get started, but the, uh, the, the, the approach is more considered and philosophical. Think before you jump. And it's, it's very interesting to watch this, and it's very, very interesting to watch the changes from year to year. Dramatic. So, and so what would you say is the uh, maybe in, in the EU the most vibrant place when it comes to open source? Uh, I think that Paris and Berlin are, are right in, together there. Very different style of vibrancy. And two years ago, uh, you know, people in Berlin or something would say, oh, gee, it would be wonderful to do startups. One year ago, they said, uh, oh, we're all doing a startup. We're going to copy an American startup. <laughs> That's a stupid... It's just never copy, uh, because it, it's just, it doesn't. It's not true to your own soul. And then this last year, this last summer, I was hearing we're doing these new things, and beginning to see that same evolution in Paris as well. When I was here this summer earlier, uh, I begin to see incubator spaces that are not formal but are organic. They come from the culture and the people themselves, and so I think that that's going to be very much alive over this next year. Who knows what we'll see next year. So do you think that European startups are getting the edge on, uh, on their U.S. counterpart? <laughs> I, I don't think that they're in advance of what the U.S. does as far as what the U.S. does. But the key is not to try to always follow somebody else, always watch them, because if you watch them and react, then you're always behind. So I think it's important that each of these different styles in each of the different countries do what they do, and they, they must find their own way. So copying is a very dangerous thing because Do you think that. that it's more and more the case that European startups are actually not watching what American startups are doing, but pretty much just relying on, on what they know what to do best? Yeah, I think that it's more and more true. And I think that, uh, of course, it's good to learn from mistakes. But when, when you try to forge a new trail, it's easy to copy, but you're always late, always second. And, and I see that with the old European startups, and more and more I see something much more exciting with new uh, European startups. All right, and, and aside from all that, you're involved with quite a few uh, open source projects. Could you just uh, Too many. go th through there's, some of there's, them? There's no time in the day. So, so I've been involved for several years now. Well, with Hadoop, of course, I bought the, I bought the drinks at the first Hadoop users group. Uh, and amazingly, there was very, very few drinks drunk. The, the people were too busy talking. But much more recently, I've been very involved with uh, Mahud, and we have some new exciting developments in that. We just had a release. We have new classic uh, clustering algorithms, new ways to do recommendation. Uh, for the last year, year and a half, I've been involved with Apache Drill, which also just had a release. This is a, a new view toward column-oriented 
uh, database access, but not just database, also files, also HBase, interchangeably, with very, very high performance and eas easily extended uh, execution framework. And then most recently, at least most recently at Apache, uh, the Storm project was just admitted to Incubator. So Storm is a real-time framework that has been used for almost two years now. Uh, Twitter bought a company called Backtype that developed this. Twitter's been using it extensively. Several dozen other companies do as well. It's, it's very nice when you don't need to store data, you just need to process it in the moment. Storm does that very nicely. And it's now Apache Incubator Storm. And is there any, uh, any EU project that you're involved in or are these mostly American? Uh, I, c I can't tell. For, from Apache and from good open source. Open source, the best open source is about building community. And good communities are very diverse. And so when we wrote the book uh, on Mahout, we had one author in Bangalore. We had one author in London. Uh, Ellen and I were in San Jose. And our editor was in Hawaii. And, and so that's, that's much, very much the way a good... Uh, machine learning project or a good open source project should be. It should have people around the world. It should be impossible to have a telephone call because of time zones. And you see that in the best open source projects. You see that the, the mailing list may go up and down in volume, but there's m emails coming at all times of the day, all times of the night, both in the developing world from Brazil, India, places like that, but also from Europe, from Japan, China, from the U.S., and that's the way good open source projects are. So they're not American open they're source. They're global. Yeah. They're global, if they're good. Uh, you see that very much with Solar Lucene, uh, maybe a little bit less with Hadoop. Uh, you see it with Mahout, and you see it uh, to some degree with uh, Drill as well. Well, thank you very much, Ted, for being with us and for taking time to, to come visit us here. <laughs> oh, it's always exciting to come to Paris, both for history and the future. And for open source. For open source. Recently. <laughs> French style. French style. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ted.